Welcome, my friends, to the weekend edition of the God Minute. This is Father Michael. I'm delighted to be with you today. I pray you're doing well and staying safe and healthy and starting to experience uh, uh, things a little bit more normally in your life uh, as we come together in this time of prayer and reflection. As we focus today on the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I want to share with you that some of the scripture scholars out there believe that when faced with a parable in the scriptures like we have today, uh, the one uh, for this weekend being about the sower of the seeds, which is in Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 23, it's less like breaking a code and more like getting a joke. Because I think people are oftentimes um, baffled by parables. The punchline of any good joke is not funny unless you have been properly set up by what precedes it. Jesus used parables in a similar manner to reinforce his message and to give people something to think about. Let me give you an example. A lady goes to the vet with a duck, which she presents to the veterinary surgeon. The duck is quite clearly dead, and after a cursory examination, the vet duly informs the lady that her duck has breathed its last. Outraged, the lady tells the vet he doesn't know what he's talking about and challenges him to prove that her duck is indeed dead. So the vet, with a sigh, opens the back door of the examination room and ushers in a large black Labrador, who walks up to the examination table, puts his paws on the table, and sniffs the duck from head to toe. The Labrador looks mournfully at the vet and slowly shakes its head and leaves the exam room. The vet then brings in a large tabby cat, which he places on the table beside the duck. The cat also sniffs the duck from head to toe and also looks up to the vet and shakes its head. The vet removes the cat and then says to the lady, There you are. I told you, your duck was dead. He taps a few keys on his computer and says, That'll be $150, please. The lady, clearly shocked, says, $150? To tell me that my duck is dead? That's outrageous. Well, said the vet, if you'd taken my word for it, it would have only been $20, but with the lab test and the CAT scan, it's $150. <laughs> I pray you remember the rest of what I have to say today, but if the joke reminds you about how the Lord shared so many beautiful stories and meaningful uh, parables with his followers, then I guess I've done my job. Good soil. <laughs> is a heart reserved for God that produces abundant love. I'm not sure who first spoke these words, but I've come to know that they are true. Good soil is a heart reserved for God that produces abundant love. In the parable of the sower of the seeds, Jesus invites us to take a soil sample of our hearts. He presents to us with four types of soil uh, how the Word of God takes root. God's own Word, scattered by God, falls on each of these types of soil. And each of us needs to ask, in light of Jesus' lesson today, what type of soil am I? Two things are absolutely crucial in farming, good seed and good soil. In this parable, the good seed is the Word of God. Taking that a step further, it is Jesus himself as well. He is the Word of God, made flesh, and making his dwelling among and within us. Therefore, we know there's no problem with the seed. The seed is perfect. So, we must concern ourselves with the soil, which for our purpose here is our heart. Our heart is the soil. It must be open to accepting the Word of God, the seed, and be nurtured to produce good fruit, which is love. 
Sometimes our heart, like any soil, needs some added things to keep it good and ready to receive the good seed. Like the farmer who uses fertilizer, nutrients, water, and the like, and depends on the sun to bring the seed to fruition, we have the scriptures and the sacraments, as well as daily prayer, to keep our heart reserved for God. We depend on the Son, Jesus, to bring that seed of faith to fruition. Jesus knew that he had to capture the ears of the listener. He knew the message he would share provided them with guidance, direction, advice, and meaning for their lives. He had to find a way to grab their attention and maybe even provide them with time to ponder and reflect on the story so that they could discover its meaning and apply it to their own lives. I realize, of course, that the joke I told at the beginning may not carry with it any special secret hidden meaning, except maybe to say, when a vet gives your duck a diagnosis, after all those years of studying, it may be safe to say you can trust his word. (laughs) I think by now it's safe to say as well that all the things we have heard in sacred scriptures and all the things we know and have heard about Jesus, it's safe to say we can trust in his word. We can trust him and know that he is not trying to lead us astray, but help us succeed to be the best possible me and the best possible you that we can be. You know, Jesus talked to the people in a way that others didn't. He spoke with a sense of authority but he spoke with love and compassion. And he reached out to those people who needed that message of hope because the leaders of his day weren't saying anything and weren't much leaders. Today, let's take the time to not only evaluate the condition of our heart, but also make it a more fitting dwelling place for God. Let's use every possible means and resources that we have uh, available to us to obtain the good soil heart for God's word to take root and flourish in action, then maybe, maybe our leadership, our worth, our goodness, our love will be abundant and ultimately more effective and more evident in the words that we say, in the deeds that we do, and hence in the world in which we live. As we conclude our time together, we remember and honor our Blessed Mother. So let's pause for a moment to bring our prayers and petitions to Mary to intercede before her Son on our behalf. Together, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Before our final blessing, I want to share a few things with you. If you're listening to this reflection on Saturday, June the 11th, The church celebrates today the Feast of St. Benedict, known as the father and founder of Western monasticism. Much of the formal liturgy of the hours is rooted in Benedict's rule, following the advice of St. Paul to pray constantly. On Tuesday of this week, July the 14th, we celebrate the Feast of St. Kateri Tekawitha, informally known as the Lily of the Mohawk Indians. She is the fourth Native American to be venerated by the Catholic Church. And on Wednesday, we celebrate the Feast of St. Bonaventure, who was a Franciscan friar in the 13th century, who was both a bishop and a doctor of the Church. May Almighty God bless you and protect you and all those you love, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Brothers and sisters, thanks for sharing a part of your day with us today. And stay safe, enjoy your weekend, and God willing, we'll see you on Monday. God bless you.